Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samet, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. In this video walkthrough, I'll be showing you how I created this crypto inspired abstract artwork in Photoshop using compositing and simple digital painting techniques. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialize in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out five videos a week. Let's roll the video, enjoy. So we're going to be doing things a little bit different today. Um, instead of a follow along walkthrough, I'm going to be doing a breakdown of this piece, showing you how it was put together, including the stock elements that were used and then we'll be including some little time lapses in between so you can see the process in action. So first off, I wanted to create a piece in homage to some new technology that's really gaining steam right now. It's called Ethereum. It's a blockchain technology and it'll be used for the future of finance. They call it DeFi, decentralized finance. It's an area that I'm really interested in right now. So I thought I'd explore these themes creatively, which is something that I do quite often. If, if something has my interest, chances are I'll be doing a bit of artwork to celebrate it. So first off, this picture here is a lot more simple than the usual work that I do. Sometimes I, I can use, you know, 10s, 20s, 30, 40, 50 stock images per composite. This one only has three photo stock elements that I got from Adobe stock links below. I wanted to take this shape here, which is the Ethereum logo. So I scored that from Adobe stock and I wanted to create a, a stylized version of that. I've used this element here, which is a stairwell to create this, these framing elements to the sides. And this is another CG render. I, I use pre-rendered CG renders quite a lot in my work. And I wanted to include that. Now the inspiration for this abstract piece is actually the Leviathan from the Hellraiser mythos. So in this document here, ETH Construct, I created the monolith itself. So first off, before we crack into that, I'm just going to show you other artists interpretations i thought that the ethereum logo looks quite like the Lev leviathan monolith from the hellraiser mythologies and movies so i put together a really quick little mood board here to use as reference initially i was going to put in all these complex patterns these kind of esoteric archaic patterns but i just thought i liked the plain concrete so before we get into the main piece, I'm just going to show you now how I put this together. We have the original here. The first thing that I did was created selections using polygonal lasso around those panels and then made a new layer group that contained each one of them individually. And I'm just going to go through them for you now. So you can see there was one, two, three, four, five, six, and then using those panels i took a texture a concrete texture and then applied them to each one of the panels on top of that to mimic the i'm just going to move the original above you can see that the lighting is different so this is lightest that's lightest that's one shade darker as is that one and that panel there's a, a shade even further darker and then this panel here is the darkest and the process that i went through was to edit and transform the concrete into those panels and then holding down command selecting the panels creating a levels adjustment layer using the adjustment panel down here at the bottom of the layer stack everybody has their own ways of accessing adjustments my preferred method is to go down there and go add adjustment layer so that was the construction of the Ethereum monolith. Now the more difficult aspect of this project was taking the original entrance, I'll zoom in there, 
removing the clouds that was nice and straightforward that's just a standard pencil job but the complex part of this project was definitely cloning out the figure there now when it comes to cloning out elements i'm not the best in the world and it's quite a ragtag approach that i use but the basic premise was to create selections of the uh, the different wall parts and then use the clone tool and the brush to clone out each one of them parts so i'm just going to hide that and we're going to zoom in and here you can see the figures being removed for the background it was a case of taking grunge textures i'm just gonna what, what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go through the actual layer stack itself so these are the primary elements we have stairwell we have the ethereum logo and we have the entrance there and within the within this layer group here we have the entrance and i can hide and show that so i'm just going to take this layer here change it from overlay to normal and there you can see it's a dirty concrete texture that was set to overlay and just left at 100 percent this area here is was done with a little bit of very basic digital painting i'm just going to hide it and you can see that was just to tone back the shadow cast by that wall the overall scene just looked a little bit better without that shadow down there and there you can see the original we have a gradient gradient map for pulling back the tones i really like the black and white gradient map for doing black and white it's a very very rich very pleasing looking black and white function okay so these aren't named but here you can see the build up the process that i went through so i'm just going to hide the repair and here you can see when i was doing the cloning it didn't take everything out and then i'll show that repair again this was where the elements were digitally painted in using the brush tools and the selection tools very straightforward you can see these little bits were simply painted over by selecting the color ranges just going to hide show that again so that is the repair layer group and layer groups are really handy for grouping all the elements together so you know what's going on one of my favorite methods for controlling light and dark tones is to use levels so here you go with the levels i wanted the this area i'm just going to command and click that to show you the selection if i hide that you can see it's quite dark before i created the selection added a levels layer mask and then tweaked the values so the middle slider came left as did the white slider to just boost boost things up just a notch there is the original so everything that we've just done there has been built upon that original stock image that's been masked out a technique that i use quite a lot just to give the illusion of emanating lights and glows is just to use a simple soft edge brush hit b make hardness a zero and merely click to create the dissipating light after that we have the stairwells and i don't think anything was too fancy there for the light i went command click on these stairwells created uh, again a levels adjustment layer tweaked those sliders to create the light that's coming from that center area and going on to the stairwells because that light's going upwards the edge of the stairwells would catch that light I'm just going to go through these now here we can see the darkness again levels but in reverse we've pulled back the values so that would be the middle slider to the right just a touch sometimes when you grab the black slider it's a bit too intense let's have a look at this one here darks again oh this one's a light so where to the left of this left stairwell we darkens the left area this is the catch light from the glow in the center that's emanating use a gradient map for i could have just done a global 
gradient map over everything but I didn't know if I wanted to selectively leave in colors and tones so there's different approaches for that and here one of my favorite go-to ways of instantly darkening things so that is the original um, stock render that I used and as opposed to creating a selection and going image adjust level uh, creating a levels adjustment layer I just went duplicate set the duplicate to multiply and you can see it's starting to pick out the really nice details another one yep get in there and then third one's a charm that had the darkness that I wanted for the overall composite underneath the stairwells I wanted to taper in the light because the light source is in the center I tapered the light again using you in my workflow all my videos you see I use levels all the time it's my preferred method of working you can use curves no problem with that at all I've simply got the middle slider pulled it to the right I'm going to hide and show that now so you can see what's going on just to taper in these darks on the edges light shaping is a huge part of photo manipulation work if you're going for realism the monolith itself is what we pulled over from the other document one more glow down here at the bottom to beef things up a levels command to just a levels adjustment layer to control the tones of this background texture and then finally in the layer group right at the bottom we have these sky textures and the sky textures themselves I'm going to duplicate this layer and make it normal so you can see that was the original sky texture and then it was darkened by so this one here is a lightened version I'm going to change that to normal so this was a lightened version of that texture a layer mask was added to that and then tapered in at the edges to create this lighting down here we'll switch that back to overlay and overlay can really pick out those fine details I quite like that as a layer blend mode we have a normal here I wanted a bit more variation the original stock image was a mirror and I wanted to create uh, a bit of variation so it didn't look like a mirror image so that's why there is a normal layer blend mode with and that's being controlled using a layer mask and then finally at the bottom it's the original concrete texture that has a layer blend mode of normal so creating the ethereum monolith itself was fairly straightforward just required some tinkering but the real challenge itself was cloning out and removing the figure here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to kick into a little bit of a time lapse now so you can see the entire process that i went through to do this So that's it for this Photoshop breakdown of the Ethereum crypto fan art piece that I've done. I hope you enjoyed this new format. Um, it's a new territory for me. So please do give me a shout out in the comments below if you like this way of doing things. I also think having a Photoshop document is really helpful for reverse engineering pieces like this. So me and the PM team are looking towards making them available via our new Patreon very soon. Is that something you'd like to see? Give us a holler below and we'll get that moving ASAP. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you at the next video. See you then.